Welcome, everybody. Aloha. Welcome to uh, the Shangri-La Museum of Islamic Art, Culture, and Design. I'm joined by Nate Giotoku. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Was that good pronunciation? Nailed it. Nailed, Nailed it. it. Right on. Um, Nate is the president and executive director of the Japanese Cultural Center of Hawaii. I'm going to read a bio for you really quick before we get into the conversation. So, born and raised in Hawaii, Nate Giotoku embodies both the aloha spirit and Japanese-American values. He is a Yonsei descendant of Japanese great-grandparents who immigrated to Hawaii to work at the Hamakua Sugar Plantation. Both of his grandfathers served in World War II as part of the 100th Battalion and the military intelligence services, respectively. Nate's story highlights the fascinating history behind Japanese immigration to Hawaii and his ikigai of making Hawaii a better place by sharing Japanese American culture. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, that's a great bio, Nate, and um, amazing family history. Can you just start by telling us a little bit about the Japanese Cultural Center of Hawaii and the work you do? Absolutely. Um, thanks for having me here. This is a beautiful, beautiful space. Um, I enjoy coming here um, and just being in it. Um, the JCCH was established in 1987 um, as um, a response to a, a desire from the community to create a, a space for um, the Japanese Americans' um, story to, to live and continue. But as well, um, not just to honor history, but to also um, see where our community goes forward. Um, I worked there um, before. I returned in 2021 um, to, to assume the role of the executive director and, um, you know, we, much like you folks, you know, we, we surround ourselves with art and culture and, but at the core, it's about the values of our community and, and seeing how that ties into our, our local host culture, as well as neighboring, uh, cultures that we live with here in Hawaii. Oh, it's amazing. Um, yeah, you know, at Shangri-La, we're very much into stewarding culture, making connections, bringing communities together, sharing art and inspiration. And as a part of the Doris Duke Foundation, our mission is to create a more, um, or to you know, build a more creative, equitable, and sustainable future. You know, which is you know, sounds simple when you say, but it's very, very uh, profound in, in what we're actually trying to do. Yeah, I mean, it's it's similar to us, like it's community building, yeah. um, and and that's not an easy task. Um, especially when, you know, very much so in Hawaii, we still kind of recognize all the different ethnic groups and, we, you know, we have our different communities. But, you know, we like to think that at the core, when you look at our values and what they mean, yeah. it's shared between the Islamic culture, um, Japanese culture, Filipino, Native Hawaiian, all of the different cultures that surround us all kind of share the same values. So, um, you know, when we try to strip down and get to that level, then the community building starts to starts to take care of itself a little. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, and you nailed it too, especially when it comes to our host culture and honoring our host culture and, and giving, um, you know, as much as we take and more than we take is, is what we should be striving towards. And, you know, the, the context of this conversation and the reason why we wanted to invite you, I mean, it's great that our two distinct cultural centers are connecting um, stories but mainly around uh, this time of year and for, for um, the Persian community and the sort of the broader um, celebrations that are happening in Central Asia, the celebration of Nowruz, which is the spring equinox celebration. And for um, the Persian community, that becomes the new year, actually. This is when the new year is celebrated. And this year, it, it falls on March 19th. Um, and so we were. We always have an event. So this year we're going to have an event for No Ruse, and it's always based around uh, food, family gathering, music, poetry. Um, so we're going to celebrate that. And in, in researching how we wanted to sort of contextualize it, we came across the National Vernal Equinox Holiday in Japan, um, known as Shunbun no Hi. Yes. So um, in Japanese culture, spring is also very important. Um, Japanese culture actually follows the, the lunar calendar, um, much like uh, Chinese culture. Um, <clears throat> so it kind of starts for us uh, in, with Setsubun, which is uh, usually early in February, and that marks the end of winter. Um, uh, right. And then, you know, we, we, there's a celebration to chase out the oni, the, the, the demons, and, 
and we you know we do some fun stuff um for that but you know there's a lot of different celebrations that have been happening in fact uh this weekend on march 3rd is uh Hina Matsuri, which is is Girls Day, where right. we celebrate uh, the girls in our lives. Um, and you know, in fact, at JCCH, I was telling you as I walked in, we just put up our our Girls Day uh, doll display, which is um, you know traditional, um, traditionally what we we do for the holiday. But there's a lot of celebrations that are happening, and of course, um, most people know Japan for the Sakura season, the cherry blossom season, which happens uh, right during the the equinox time. Yeah. Yeah, so in, in Iran and many places around the world, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, you know, this is a celebration that's really rooted in nature. And it's an ancient celebration. Um, and obviously, you know, a lot of these ancient cultures are very much connected to the passing of the seasons and marking significant moments and holidays according to the rhythms of nature. So in Iran, for example, um, this is a, a s celebration that spans several weeks, actually. And really, there's, there's three very distinct parts of the celebration. So the Wednesday before the vernal equinox is called um, Charsham Besuri, which is a celebration that, and all of these celebrations really are families getting together um, and celebrating nature. So going out to parks, going out you know, near the ocean or to rivers. Um, so it starts with the Wednesday before, and then you have the vernal equinox, Noruz, which is the official turning of the calendar. And then 13 days after Noruz, uh, we have another celebration called Siz de Bedar. And that one is also you know, everyone hanging out, going to the park, and there's different foods that are eaten, different fruits that are consumed. Um, and this is a, a national holiday in places like Iran where people are basically out of school, out of work. And growing up in Iran, that was my favorite time because you're- It sounds fun. It's fun. You're, yeah, yeah you have off from school for like yeah. three weeks, you know, families go vacation and you really get to hang around your family and see cousins. And it's always the younger folks visiting the older folks oh, in nice. the family. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, I think for Japanese culture, um, you know, for many, many centuries, uh, the Shinto religion was, was the dominant religion. And yeah. the Shinto religion is really based in nature. Kami, our, our spirits, are in everything around us. So it's a very nature-based kind of uh, ideal. And I think even as they started to switch to Bo Buddhism uh, as, the, as a more dominant religion, a lot of those Shinto practices got kind of kept and, and brought into it. So... Uh, one thing that is happening around the time of your New Year celebration is what we call Hanami, which is the celebration of of uh, basically flower watching or enjoying the flowers, wow. enjoying the cherry blossom season. Um, and in Japan, what they do is they actually like dig out from work, go sit under, um, you know, um, the cherry blossom trees, the blossoms and picnic and enjoy themselves and, yeah. and be outside and. Um, and the whole point of the cherry blossom season is to understand the fleeting beauty of nature wow. uh, and the delicacy, of, the delicateness of these blossoms that are so beautiful, but they, you know, with one strong gust of wind, they can, they can be blown away and, yeah. and you lose them. So uh, it's a very um, significant part of the year where, where this uh, Japan celebrates uh, Hanami. That's beautiful. It's like the ephemeral nature of these flowers they're there exactly. you enjoy them and then they're gone yes they're and gone. it's it's fleeting so you need yeah. to enjoy the moment of life which is why they they take breaks from work and go sit outside because when they're in bloom you need to go do it because if another like i said a rain big rain comes it'll knock the flowers down and you miss your opportunity to do wow. hanami for the year that's amazing and you know to contextualize it here in hawaii we think it's important and, and the reason why we also wanted to connect with your center um is, you know, we're very distinct cultural centers in the same Ahupua'a on the island of Oahu, serving very distinct communities, but very much so mindful of all of the diversity that exists here. And again, like we said, our, our host culture, the Kanaka community here. And for us, it's really important to bring them into these types of celebrations because we get so much, you know, they share so much culture with us, just the function of being here. You know, we all benefit from Hawaiian culture. You know, and I think it's really important for us to be able to offer that back. Yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, you know, we at the JCCH for sure, you know, really try to keep in mind like our, our 
where we are. Yeah. Um, and even in uh, for the Japanese Culture Center of Hawaii, um, even simple things like putting the Hawaii part in front of the Japanese American is important because I feel personally that um, our culture here is very much um, shaped by being in Hawaii and around the native Hawaiian culture and around our, our neighboring cultures. Um, it's very much different than if we went back to Japan right now. Um, sure. And and that's an important acknowledgement to recognize and to keep in mind because um, it does shape the way we do our programming. It does shape me as a fourth generation Japanese American who grew up here. Um, I'm not Japanese. I'm ethnically Japanese, but I'm not um, fully culturally Japanese because here in Hawaii, it's a whole different uh, definition. Right. And that's important to bring that into the conversation every time we, we do programming. No, and it's amazing. And, and um, really, how fortunate for the, for the center to have you. I think you're very, you know, uniquely qualified. Oh, thank you. To be <laughs> yeah. able to <laughs> really, that. I mean, to, to be able to contextualize these, these spaces, the cultures, and bring communities together. You have to understand that. You have to be a part of the community. Um, and, and we're very honored here in Shangri-La. You know, we, we serve many different communities and cultures. Our collection, like what we're looking at here, I mean, these tiles are from Iran. And we see the, the ethics of celebrating nature and the beauty of nature. And so much of Islamic philosophy talks about stewardship of nature. And it's, it's a very important part of that. And you see that represented throughout the artwork. Um, and so similar to Hawaiian values of aloha aina, right? Having aloha for the land and understanding deeply what that means. It's not just loving the land. It's, it's a, a, a privileged responsibility to that land. And it's an amazing opportunity anytime we get to bring communities together and exchange cultural notes, in a sense, and find those connecting points. Um, there's way more connecting points than what separates us. Yeah, I think you hit that that last little statement is is pretty much the core of, of everything. It's it's, you know, trying to for us it's trying to teach people or like open up people to to the fact that there are a lot more things that connect us to each other. Um values, art, nature, culture, um, than what divides us. And and if we can concentrate on those things that we find in common we can at least create a foundation of which we can grow on, you know. Um, so, yeah, a lot of that is, you know, just just striving to find those little commonalities and see For those sure. connections and then bringing them into the conversation and, and, and putting them up front. For sure. And, and also it's important to maintain distinct cultural values and identities, you know, because diversity is really important. So it's, it's both... Both things happening at the same time. Two truths can exist at the same Which time. Which is a challenge. Can it is a challenge, challenge, for sure. It can be a challenge. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, whenever, so, you know, we, we, do, we do curricula for schools. And um, we recognize that a lot of times when we walk into a school, not every student is Japanese or part Japanese. Um, but it's interesting being here in Hawaii. They can, even if they're not, they can understand some of the things we're talking about because they're surrounded by it. Um, but we always constantly remind them, like, our story is our story. You have your family history. And it's important to dig into that as well. Yes, for sure. Um, you can Absolutely. find some and use our, our story as a way to inspire yourself to look into your own story and find those, those things that keep you connected to your, your, your roots, your blood, yeah. but also keeps you connected to other people. Yeah, that's so well said. Um, you know, using your stories to inspire others to find their stories. And this is a, a very important um, lesson that I've learned from Hawaiians, from Native Hawaiians who are, you know, going back and pursuing and, and reclaiming parts of their culture and practices. And, you know, for a lot of people in Hawaii, it's infectious and you want to be a part of that. And they're so inviting and so generous with sharing. But you know, the more I learn about Hawaiian culture, it doesn't make me want to be Hawaiian. It makes me want to be more Persian, who I am. And so that I can bring those stories and share them as much as I am being uh, uh, taught. Yeah, it's, it's funny. So when I, I, I mentioned I worked at JCCH first, and then I left JCCH to work at another nonprofit. And that nonprofit actually um, was more connected to the Native Hawaiian community, Native Hawaiian groups. And so I got to get exposed to different types of um, 
you know, teachers, different people, uh, and, and all the from Kupuna to Kiki, they're they're teaching, right? They're always right. teaching you something. But um, I found that that experience actually better prepare, prepared me for my return to JCCH. Wow. Like it really kind of gave me a little more perspective on the world that surrounds me, but also like myself as far as like, yeah, I, I wanted to learn more and I'm very interested in Native Hawaiian culture and I still try to f- learn as much as I can. But I also it also made me want to like learn more about like my roots and like where I came from and even trying to figure out where I came from in Japan. That wow. stuff wasn't imparted to me until I, you know, I kind of started learning more about Native Hawaiian culture or other cultures and then yeah. wanting to learn more about my, my own. Well, that's amazing, Nate. Thank you so much for making the time coming down here. Oh, I appreciate it. Anytime I get to come down here, this <laughs> is, I mean, this is like the coolest spot. I mean, I, I, I get a little jealous that you guys get to work here because like this is a, like the one of the best offices in the state for sure, if not the world. Yeah, but no, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty spectacular. Thank you for saying that. I mean, your space is pretty spectacular thank you. as well. And thank the you. Amazing work that you folks do. Thank you very much. And it, it's really, I think we both can agree. I mean, it is a privileged responsibility to be here now. It is. And to steward these um, legacies, these cultures, these histories, and find opportunities to connect people. I yeah. mean, what a privilege, right? No, thank you very much. Yeah, and it, it is a privilege. It is a responsibility, and I think um, it's important that I, I enjoy that we we feel we treat it that way, and I I know your staff and my staff look at it that way. It's not it's not a job. It's a it's a Absolutely. it's a privilege to be here, and it's a responsibility to be here. And and yeah, we take it we take it serious, but we have fun. But we we take it serious at no the same doubt, time for sure. Right on, Nate. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. Love.